Hello class, today we're discussing another important figure in American economic history, particularly in the post-war period. Today I've chosen Helen Gurley Brown to highlight. She was a controversial author for her time and became the editor-in-chief of Cosmopolitan magazine, building it to what it is today. Helen Gurley was born in Arkansas in 1922. She lost her father in an elevator accident in 1932, and she moved to Los Angeles with her mother and sister in 1937, when she was 15. From her teen years, Helen Gurley demonstrated ambition, confidence, and ingenuity. She wrote this letter to the president asking for him to write to her sister who was in the hospital with polio. FDR did send her sister a letter and her family had the letter framed. She attended Woodbury Business College, graduating in 1941. After that, she worked at several companies and ended up as a secretary at an advertising agency. She was promoted to copywriter and according to a newspaper article, she was not the highest paid woman in advertising in Los Angeles for not. She married in 1959, becoming Helen Gurley Brown. In 1962, she published her first book, Sex and the Single Girl. The book was a departure from most women's literature leading up to that point. Brown promoted women's sexual freedom, which was extremely controversial. Her work was considered to be part of the feminist literature, encouraging women to take control of their own lives. Some, like Betty Friedan, though, vehemently opposed Brown's approach to feminism, because while Betty encouraged changing the system, the patriarchy, Helen encouraged using the system, manipulating it to improve one's station in life. Ultimately, the book was a huge success, and Brown earned over $250,000 from it, which in today's dollars would be over $2 million. Her book inspired a movie of the same name, which starred Tony Curtis and Natalie Wood. Brown continued to write books, but in 1965, she was brought in as the editor-in-chief of Cosmopolitan magazine with the goal of reinvigorating the dying publication. Pictured here is the first issue of Girlie Brown's Cosmopolitan. Although Helen had taken an entrepreneurial approach to dating and marrying, this was her first real entrepreneurial endeavor. She didn't own the magazine, but it was hers. She described her goal, saying everything in Cosmopolitan should be upward and onward, not in a goody-goody sense, but in a realistic sense. She wanted it to be mainly self-help and advice on how to do things. Brown described her readers, saying the Cosmopolitan woman can have a husband and children at home, but I'm not just going to deal with those aspects of her life. I'm going to appeal to the selfish, emotional, visceral, me, me, me side of her. I want to edit specifically for her, so that when she gets finished reading Cosmo, she says, that's my book. The idea of women looking out into the world, breaking out of the confines of the home, has been central to the feminist movement over time. Wendell Berry wrote, the history of our time has been, to a considerable extent, the movement of the center of consciousness away from home. Mark T. Mitchell discusses that point of view, saying, Yet this perfect place in the future is never found, and the individual contents himself with a life of abstract possibility, never settling, so never disappointed. He becomes, in short, the cosmopolitan who fancies himself at home anywhere. These observations are true of the transformation Gurley Brown brought to the Cosmopolitan magazine as well, and it gives us pause as to whether it's a desirable direction in which to be headed. Nevertheless, Helen succeeded with the magazine and remained the editor-in-chief into the 90s. She was a huge success, became a household name, and generated millions in revenue for what was at one time a dying periodical. She ushered in a new era and became an icon. Frank A. Benick Jr., the Hearst CEO, remembers her saying, Brown was an icon. Her formula for honest and straightforward advice about relationships, career, and beauty revolutionized the magazine industry.